In this video, we will learn how to create a one to one relationship between entities when we work with Entity Framework Code First Approach. My name is Dhananjay Kumar. So let's get it started. Let us consider that we have a container table and a product table. Both these tables are in one to one relationship. So, a row in container table will be related to a particular row in product table and vice versa. To simplify it further, a product cannot exist without a container. A row in container will contain a particular row or product table. There should be an entry in container table to hold a newly created product entity. To create a product entity, first you need to have a container entity. So we do have these requirements and we need to implement that using Entity Framework Code First Approach. Just to simplify it further, uh, in terms of database, we can say that primary key of container table will be as foreign key of the product table. So having this requirement in front of us, let us see that how we can implement that in Entity Framework Code First Approach. I got a blank solution in Visual Studio, so let us go ahead and add a new project in this. I'm going to add a class library, I'll call that uh, whatever name I want to, I'll be calling that as efcodefirstdemo.ef library. You are free to give any name of your choice and say OK. Here I got added a class library, let me go ahead and get rid of this class1.cs. Next what I need to do, I need to add Entity Framework uh, reference in this library and I can add that using uh, the console, package manager console. I'll go here, it is slicing the power cell host. From here I'll select required project, there is only one project so that is selected by default in default project and I'll say hey install package entity framework and it will install required by entity framework package in my project. So here you can see that entity framework uh, got added to the project successfully and you can see this message here. Let us close this window, go to solution explorer and create class. I'll go ahead and add a new item then class and I want to create a container I want to create a container table so the class name I'll give as container dot cs which is added here once that class is added here public class container I'll go and give some properties id and then public string container name. So what I have done, I have uh, given two properties in container class, one container name and then ID. ID is the default ID column uh, or uh, identification column of your table. If you want, you can give it to container ID as well, name of the class and then uh, 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 suffixed by ID. So I have created a container class. Let me go ahead and create now a product class. I'll go and say hey, create a product class for me. Product.cs and again I can make it public. And then some property integer ID and this would be name of the columns in table. I'll call it as product name and let us say we want product price. So here you see that I have created a product table with three properties and a container table with two properties container name and ID. Uh, next I need to go ahead and create context class for that I'll go again and add a new class. 
I can give it any name I'm giving it as EF context and this public class will uh, extend DB context class DB context class should be inside let us resolve this it is inside system.data.entity and then in constructor of this you need to specify that how you want to create uh, the table or how you want to initialize the database so you can say that database dot set initializer and in this you need to pass type of context which is EF context in this scenario and then this you need to pass the strategy there are three strategy you can choose from I'll choose use drop create database always drop create database if model change I'll choose the second option if model changes then drop the database and create again uh, this may not be useful uh, because in this whenever model changes uh, your database will be recreated and you lose the data which is already there so I'll say that drop create database if model changes and then in this again I'll have to pass the type which is EF context and here we go so here we uh, specified in constructor of EF context that drop and create database each time model changes once that is done what you need to do you need to create properties db set and in this you pass uh, types or the tables which you want to create we have product so I'll say hey choose product and then create a products table in the same way do for me for container and here I'll say that choose container and then containers great so so far uh, we have created uh, two classes which will get converted to tables and then a context class here we specified a strategy if you notice we have not specified any relationship yet, but let us go ahead and see that how our uh, database got created and then come back and then set one to one relationship what I have done here created a console application project and then add a reference of uh, EF library as well as add a reference of entity framework after adding those references added a namespace over here and then to work with database and to create database you need to create instance of context class which is EF context I'll say that EF context context new EF context once this instance is created let me go ahead and say hey context at products so it will not of uh, it will uh, give me uh, all uh, the query which will get created to uh, fetch products here so let us go ahead and print this value which is result so this should be suffice for us to create database in the table now let me go ahead and run this program and as you see that here that a uh, query got created now if I go to database and connect it to a local database server since we have not specified any connection string so Visual Studio will try to create database in local database I'll go ahead and say refresh go to databases and here you see that there is EF code first demo dot EF live dot EF context database has been created you can very much configure this name in connection string if you want to but by default the database name will be same as the context class name which is EF context it should have two tables that containers and products in container tables if you go the columns as you see that ID is primary key and container name and in the same way uh, for products table in the columns ID should be primary key and product name and product price 
Now as you see that there is no uh, relationship between products table and containers table and uh, we have a requirement to create one to one relationship. So let us see how we can do that. But before we go ahead and create a relationship, let us try to add some data. So if we want to add a product, we'll say that product P as new product and then give uh, ID as let us say ID is equal to one and product name as for example pen and product price some value 20 we need to add this uh, product in the table great once that is added what we need to do uh, we create an instance of product and this will go as a row let us create a container also say container C as new container and we'll give this container ID as something 11 and then container name as box as you see that I have created two uh, instances of product and container and their IDs are different because they are not related to each other but I should able to insert these values uh, successfully in the database which I can do like do using context dot products dot add p and then context dot containers dot add c and then in last I'll say that hey context or save changes so this will uh, create two rows in uh, respective tables now let us go ahead and again run this and when I go back to database again and in containers table I'll say that hey select a row for me and here you see that one row, one uh, box got created here. In the same way, I can go to product table. And here also one row has been created. As you see that even though we have uh, a specified ID value in container, uh, Visual Studio gives you its all ID or because this is, uh, this is uh, automatically generated and that goes to one. Now you see that uh, that there is no relationship between product and container. I can go ahead and uh, uh, create any product. Uh, here I can go ahead and add one more product and which container does not exist. So I we, we can go to products here and say that hey edit a row here and I can go and add one more product here. Pencil 200 you see that a product has been added and there's no a container for that product yet in the container table because there's no relationship between these two tables now let us go ahead and see that how we can create a one-to-one -one relationship now to create one-to-one -one relationship a container should contain a product so here you need to create a property a virtual property you can create and say that hey public virtual product and product so here's we have created a product property and the same way we'll go to a product class and here we'll create public virtual container container get and set now there are two ways you can uh, create a relationship one using uh, entity framework fluent api and another using data annotation i'm going to use data annotation now to create a foreign key what all you need to do go to the primary key of product and here you say that its foreign key is the primary key of container entity so this should able to create one to one relationship in between product class and a container class the other way if you don't want to use foreign key the other way is that just go on this property and attribute it to required That does say that this particular property is required for product. Now if you go ahead to program and run it again. So remember that I have commented this in Sarson because uh, it is going to it, it will validate uh, uh, this primary key foreign key relationship. I'll go ahead and say run. 
So here you see that I got that uh, query. Now I'll go to database here. In the database again, let us go and refresh it. And then we have something called EF code first demo, which is here. If I go to tables, there are two tables, containers and products. So go to containers table. In the containers tables column, you have ID as a primary key, which is expected. But in products table, uh, you should have that ID as a foreign key as well. So let us go to products table over here and say columns. And here you see that ID is foreign key as well. Now if you go to keys, here it is saying you that that I'd, there's two uh, keys on this table. One one is that products primary key, and then dvo.products.containers ID is the foreign key for this. Now, if you go ahead and try to insert data in this table, since now they are having one to one relationship, I'll go and say, hey, create a product, create a container, and then just add them. So I'm trying to add a product. Uh, I'm trying to add a. Um, uh, product and container and I'm not providing any container information for the product and let us see that how it works. Uh, I'm expecting a error here. So let's go ahead and say start. Oh well uh, it is not showing exception because we need to uncome in this line as well when we try to save in the database here you see that you got an error that system dot data validation exception occurred uh, there is entity validation error property for more details so break it and let us go ahead and put it inside the try catch exception just to examine that what is the error I'll go here this and then catch exception ex and then we'll say throw ex and then put a breakpoint over here and then again run it since there's an exception so this breakpoint came here and if we open this guy then go to this go to this uh, one error go to zero and then validation error one zero the error message which you see text that a container field is required so when it is trying to insert a value in the product table it is entity framework is demanding the container field and that's why it is showing you exception we can verify that whether uh, we are successfully able to create primary key foreign key relationship or not by inserting something uh, from SQL Server as well go to products table and say that edit the row and here we'll go and say that product name paint product price let us say 100 and when we come here you see that we are getting an exception here as well that uh, does not allow nulls because uh, there is no container for that so you see that here we are able to create a one to one relationship between two entities and again to summarize what all you need to do that container is your primary entity here so here you create a property uh, for that uh, for the entity in which you'll have you are going to create foreign key relationship but don't make it require or something and then go to products here we need this container for the product so i'm making it required other way you can do is that by specifying foreign key attribute on top of the primary key so in this way you can create one-to-one -one relationship now keep in mind something that name of the columns should be exactly the same if here your primary key column is ID then here also your primary key columns should be the ID if they are different you can do that uh, but you have to explicitly specify that so I hope that now you have a better understanding that how you can create one-to-one -one relationship between entities when working with entity framework code first approach thank you so much for watching this video see you next video